All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to church. Can't hear you. Good morning, everybody. Here we are. Hi. Um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Mark. Uh, I'm the new vicar here at St. John's. It's a little bit bizarre for me to say, but it's such a privilege and honor to join your church family. And today is the first Sunday of the month, which means it is our family service. So this morning, Dawn and I will be tag teaming and just kind of leading us uh, through our time of worship um, together. So I'm just going to invite forward Dawn, who's going to lead us shortly in a time of confession. And that's a time where we bring all those things on our hearts before God that we might need to say sorry for and things like that. But uh, let me begin with a short prayer, and then we'll start. Heavenly Father, thank you for this glorious day, a day where we can gather uh, to worship you, to really spend time in your word, and to have our hearts touched and transformed by your spirit. Be with us now, we pray in your name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to come into a time of confession, and if you feel comfortable, I would like you to make a little fist and put it over your heart. Oh, I can't do that because it blocks my microphone. So just put it over your heart like that. I'd like you to think about the past week. What have you done that has broken God's heart? Have you told any lies? Have you said nasty things about or to someone? Was there something you didn't do that you should have done? Now I'd like you to hold your hands out, palms up. Jesus, in you I find rest and peace. I can talk to you about anything, my worries and my fears, my happiness and sadness, my anger and disappointment. You always listen and you always understand. Thank you for reassuring us of your love. Amen. And so Lord God, we thank you that for your great mercy and grace, that when we say sorry, God, that you come and reside in our hearts, you offer forgiveness. In your name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Thank you, Lord. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice i 
Okay, I need a bit of help. I need some some people who have some energy to join me for the next song where we can skinny to sing how great God is. So if you know this song and maybe you're below the age of 30, maybe, come join me. Oh God is a great big God. like a little quiz today so um, that'll be a bit fun and there's a prize I remember to buy the prize okay so <laughs> sometimes the people who make laws get a little bit carried away and pass some very silly laws there might be a reason at the time but later on we just don't understand why I did some research on the internet and found some examples of some very strange laws. Now I want you to break into groups. It's an intergenerational service, so I'd like to see the generations mixing it up. Um, try and get in a group with people you don't know or are from a different generation and try to figure out which places have which laws? Do you want to come over here right, with? Let's get into our groups. Do you want to come over here with Lorraine and Chris? Let the quiz begin. You've got a few minutes left, you better get answering those questions. Alright, in Thailand it is illegal to step on money. The king's head is on it and it's an insult to the monarchy. 
Don't want to do that. Okay. In Fairbanks, Alaska, it is illegal to serve alcohol to a moose. I think that one was pretty easy. <laughs> I wonder if it's legal to serve alcohol to a bear. <laughs> no. In Nicholas County, West Virginia, a preacher is not allowed to tell jokes from the pulpit. Richard Christopher, you're in trouble. <laughs> In, in Oklahoma, people who make ugly faces at dogs can be arrested and put in jail or fined. I wonder if a bulldog can get thrown in the pound for making ugly faces at people. I don't know. In Samoa, it is illegal to forget your wife's birthday. I'm going there. In South Australia, it is illegal to interrupt a wedding. They have lots of weird laws in South Australia. I don't know. It's a different world. Um, it is illegal to build a sandcastle in Spain, even if you're a child. That's pretty harsh. My goodness. And every year in Japan, people between the ages of 40 and 74 must have a waist measurement. And if they are, and if they are over the accepted number of inches, they are fined. Boo, now, terrible. what's the exception? Sumo, Sumo wrestlers. <laughs> They'd be in a bit of trouble. And in Morrisville, Pennsylvania, women need a permit to wear makeup. Oh dear, I hope the makeup police aren't here this morning. And in Turin, Italy, it is illegal to dye your dog's fur, and you also must walk your dog three times a day or face a fine of up to 500 euros. Wow, they really take their dog care seriously. Okay, so how did you do? Round of applause everybody for taking part and enduring that well really done. tough. Course. Excellent. So I think you'll agree that there are, those are some pretty crazy laws, but this is nothing new. Even back in the day when Jesus lived, they had some laws that were a bit odd. There was a group of religious leaders called Pharisees who were the keepers of the law of Moses. And they believed that keeping the law was everything. They also believed that their own understanding and teaching about the law was the only correct teaching. Jesus was quite often opposed by the Pharisees and was accused of breaking the law of Moses especially the laws regarding the Sabbath. Today's Gospel reading tells us about two times that the Pharisees accused Jesus and his followers of violating the Sabbath. Now, we are going to have a dramatic reading of the Gospel today, and I would like all the children, children, um, to come and take part, and Jamie is graciously going to be our Jesus for today. Okay, the scene is set. Take it away, Kimberly. And Jesus and his disciples were walking through some fields of grain. Okay, walking, walking. His disciples were hungry and began to break off some heads of grain to eat. Okay, break it off. The Pharisees saw it and said to Jesus, oh. No, that's the Pharisees. Oh, sorry. Big <laughs> <laughs> Why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said that breaking off a few heads of Jesus thought that breaking off a few heads of grain to eat did not amount to harvesting a crop, so he answered them. Haven't you heard, read in the scriptures, what David and he and his companions did when they were hungry? He went into the house of God and brought the Lord by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests were allowed to eat. He also shared it with his companions. 
Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people. People were not created to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. Later, Jesus went into the synagogue. Okay, so come over this way. Walk over, disciples. Over here. Um, and noticed. I noticed that there was a man who had a deformed hand. Okay, come on in. You come in. Over to Jesus. Yes. Some of the Pharisees were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched to see if he would heal the man on the Sabbath. If so, they would accuse Jesus of working on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. Then Jesus turns to his enemies and asks, Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day of doing evil? The Pharisees refused to answer him. Jesus looked at them angrily and was saddened at the hardness of their hearts. Then he said to the man, Hold out your hand. He held out his hand, and Jesus healed him. Immediately, the Pharisees left to go and plot how to kill Jesus. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you to our lovely helpers. Thank you very much, Jamie. That was brilliant. Okay. All right. Now, one of the Ten Commandments says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. This law is for our benefit. It helps us to take time out of our busy week, stop, rest, recharge, and spend time with God, just in case we've forgotten him during the week. This is the original work-life balance, and as with all things created by God, it is good. But can you imagine a law so silly that you could not do a good thing like healing someone because it was the Sabbath? Surely that was not what God meant. At the time, there was an overriding law to save life, even on the Sabbath. So if someone's life was in danger, you were allowed to save them. I think the thing to notice here is that Jesus was interpreting that law to save life, even on the Sabbath, to include the need to help people who are suffering even on the Sabbath. Jesus understood that some things are a barrier to rest. His actions allowed a deeper rest to weary, suffering people. What is more wearying and distracting than hunger? What is more wearying and distracting than an injured or disabled body? Helping the poor rest from hunger and helping a wounded man find health is fitting for the Sabbath. Feed and heal people and then maybe they can focus on keeping the Sabbath. This is not to say that every Lord's Day should be filled up with service projects. That's the temptation for a lot of us and a lot of people in churches these days. I've been guilty of this many times. I grew up in the salvos. We never stopped moving. Last year, before Christmas, I was working seven days a week and I justified this by saying that all the stuff just needed to be done and it would only be for a few weeks. I just had to get through Christmas. I ended up exhausted and broken. I limped through Christmas, I don't know how, and just collapsed. My daughter, bless her, and it took for this to happen for me to wake up. She, we had um, some Ten Commandments colouring sheets that she'd been colouring in. So she'd seen all the Ten Commandments written out. 
and she pointed out to me, Mum, you're breaking God's commandment. You're working every day of the week. And uh, I knew she was right. We misinterpret Jesus if we think that Sabbath rest is not required of us. Jesus did not say the Sabbath was unimportant. At the very least, he showed up in the synagogue to worship. So what is my point? The balance of work and rest is very important, but not at the expense of compassion, mercy and love. Okay.
Jesus, thank you for that picture we have of you healing the man with the withered hand. But not just healing his hand, but Lord, but restoring him back into his community. Lord, I pray for those of us who are tired or weary, Lord, that your spirit would begin a restorative work in our hearts. And again, that you would restore our community here at St. John's, that we might be a blessing to each other and our community. Praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. Please be seated. Now, we're going to have our new little segment that I've called The Window. And guess who's in the hot seat today? Hello. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask a few questions to our new vicar, and we'll find out a little bit more about how he thinks and all that sort of stuff. And I don't know what the questions are. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So following on from our theme today, um, how is rest important for you? Or is it important for you? Is rest important? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, my favorite verse right now is Psalm 23. It's about the Lord is my shepherd. And it says in there that he makes me lie down. And I realized, a bit like how Abigail made you rest, that sometimes I need a bit of prodding from God to actually rest. Oh, I'm so busy. I know many of you are busy. Sometimes I'm busy because I need to feel busy. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right. And yet the Bible reminds me that he makes me lie down. And so that's why I know rest must be important. And if you carry on that psalm, isn't it? It says, he lies down in green pastures by streams of water, and then he leads me down paths of righteousness. And when Kai and I were praying about coming here, when we found out the news, we were praying that the Lord would lead us down paths of righteousness, that we would serve this church, would serve you as God would intend. And so to do that, he said, you need to rest with me. And what kinds of things do you do to rest intentionally? Um, Kai is laughing because it's not really... I'm an only child, that's my confession. And, so I, and I'm also an introvert. Yeah, you're like, no, you're not. I really am. And for me to rest, I need to take time out to be alone. And one of the ways I do that is I like watching sci-fi movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the reason I like sci-fi movies is they often are projections and imaginations of the future. Okay? So it kind of takes me out of whatever stuff I'm involved with, concerned with. And it gives me an hour and a half, two hours, to allow my imagination. And I think it's in that imaginative space that God often speaks to me, where I'm not looking down but I'm looking outwards and upwards and so I find watching sci-fi reading sci-fi novels talking to friends about it really helps me rest and gain perspective fantastic um, okay well, that's something we learned about our new vicar isn't it um, have you ever been burnt out because you didn't make time for rest Kai do you want to join me I won't have a, um, <laughs> I don't think I've been burnt out physically, so you wouldn't see it. But inside, I've been burnt out. And I think I'm aware of it because I start becoming a little bit grumpy. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, was I burnt out yesterday? <laughs> and you know, there's a lovely children's song I hope we're going to learn in the next coming months about the fruit of the spirit, love, peace, gentleness, patience, kindness, self-control. And when I notice that these fruits in my life are a bit withered, then I think it's because I'm burnt out and not resting. So my, my family are a great way of helping me realize if I need to take a time out and a rest because what's coming out of me is not coming out of a place of rest and Sabbath and peace and knowing who I am in God, but it's all coming out of me doing, me achieving, being measured by what I do, and it comes out a little bit more bitter in taste. So that's, yeah. Great. You Thank have permission you. to tell me to take a rest, everybody. 
thank you very much. That's all the questions I have. But, um, yeah, that was really insightful, and thank you very much. Pleasure. Valentina's going to come and pray with us. Okay. All right, I'll hold it for her. Okay. Okay, shall we pray? Dear God, bless your church around the world. We pray for churches that are hard working for you. May they find ways to stop and rest to serve people better. Bless this partnership and let your kingdom come. We bring to you people who cannot find rest because they are poor or ill. Please heal and comfort them. Bless the whole world. We pray for troubled areas and for places where people don't have what they need to live. We cry out to your against the things yeah, that right. threaten life on this planet. Pour out your peace. Bless each one of us that we may also bless everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our okay. prayer. Amen. Right. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Great. Just before we bring our service to a close with a final prayer and blessing, we're going to have a closing song and it's actually a song based on Psalm 23 about the Good Shepherd so if you're able please do sing along as we sing the and these are words of scripture so as you sing them we sing them over one another as well because we sing the blessings and the promises of God in this place please stand the Lord is my shepherd and I will not pass I will not in my Savior is more The Lord is my anchor He steadies my soul He keeps my feet grounded In the truth of His word For oh, I love you Lord of my heart And I need you For all that I want I will see
Lord is. The Lord is my shepherd, and I will not want, I will not fear, for Savior is near. The Lord is my anchor, He steadies my soul, keeps my feet grounded in the truth of His word. Lord, we thank you again for speaking to us and encouraging us through the power of your word. Lord, as we go forth this week, may you lead us down paths of righteousness. Would you help us to find time to rest with you, to spend time in your presence, God. We thank you for your love and for being with us here today. God, I pray for our church. I thank you for a time where all ages can come together in worship of you. Lord, I ask you would fill this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. So let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.